If you've been programming in C-sharp and heard about reflection, you've probably heard or said for yourself that using reflection is not the thing to do. We know that it's dangerous. We know that if you're using reflection a lot in your code, it's not right. You're going to make mistakes. There's better ways to do things. We've heard it all. And like I said, we've been guilty of saying it too. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I want to talk about reflection and a really cool thing that I ended up discovering when I was trying to use some debug watches for a previous video. Now, full disclaimer, I've said this before in other videos and I'll say it again, I am not encouraging you to try and go break some rules using reflection and write bad code, but this is truly a really helpful tip that is not going to be writing code into your project to compile we're going to use it when debugging. Like I said, I discovered this when I was going back through my benchmarking code and fixing up some errors in one of the last YouTube videos. So before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train and to subscribe to my channel. All right, on my screen, I have the code in Visual Studio for my regular expression benchmarking video. And what I wanna walk through is a situation that I encountered where on line 12, I needed to set this regex cache size to be zero. And the reason that I wanted to do this is because I had already messed up my regular expression benchmarks and I didn't want to have to do it again. I needed to prove to myself that when I set this to zero, I'm truly not going to have any headaches with cached regular expressions. Now to see how this all works before I show you the reflection part, which is a bit of a spoiler on the lines above. But if I scroll down a little bit and we go into the static method for matches, so I go into here, you can see that we have this regex cache. So once we try performing a match, we'll go look up the cache to see whether or not we get this pattern. So if I do that, we see that we have this regex cache here, which is an internal sealed class. Because this is internal, it means that it's only going to be visible to this assembly, system, text, regular expressions means it's not visible to our assembly that we're operating in. That's going to pose a bit of a challenge because what I want to do is be able to run some reflection code, which you can see up here and just calling it out. It's this S underscore cache list field that I want to get out of that cache class, right? So if I go back into this cache, this is a field that if I scroll down a little bit lower right here on line 55, this is the field that I want to get access to because when we try to cache things and I'm trying to prevent that, we would add them into this list. So if I can prove that this list is still zero, then I can prove that I'm in good territory. Going back to our program here, what I need to be able to do is get this regex cache because if I can do that, I can use some of the dark arts that we know from reflection to get this field and use binding flags to be able to get a private field. That's something that you probably shouldn't be doing in general for most of your code. If you find yourself writing code like this, ask yourself why, right? There should be a very good reason for it. It's pretty rare, but you'll notice that this regex cache, I don't have access to it. And if I try to resolve this error, the only things that Visual Studio are suggesting to me are to make a new type or install another NuGet package. Neither of those things are what we want to do. And that comes down to the fact that we can't see this regex cache class. The other couple of things we could do are look at these types, right? So I could try to get the type for regex cache, or I could try the fully qualified way to get it. And if we go run this, which I'll do in just a moment, we'll see that these come back as null. So I'm going to go ahead and press play and we'll debug it. But before I do, I wanted to explain that after setting that cache size to zero, you can see I'm making a new regular expression, right? So the pattern, make the new instance, and then I'm going to call matches on an empty string. Maybe I should put something in here to see if we end up matching it. So that way we're not short circuiting anything behind the scenes, right? So if I do this, if caching was enabled, we would see that our pattern, a node for it would get added in to that list. So let's go ahead and debug. What I'm going to do is add this to the watch. So I right clicked on it, add watch. I will add this to the watch. Here we go, there's another one in there. And you can see these bottom two entries, right? They say null. And that's because when we go to evaluate these on the watch, they don't get anything back. So Visual Studio, when it's running these, cannot go find these types by these names. So that's unfortunate. What is cool, and this is a really awesome thing about debug watches that I didn't know, 
is if you look at the top line of my watch list here, right? It says type of regex, and it does the get field. That's the exact code that we have on line 11. Line 11 didn't work for us because we can't see the regex cache, right? It's marked as internal. But if I go press this refresh button, it did in fact go look for it. And just to prove it, this third entry that we have that says type of regex cache in our watch was actually able to go resolve that type, even though it's marked as internal. So that's just proof that there's not some weird fancy magic going on for this first watch. It truly is able to find the type and then go do reflection to get the field for S underscore cache list, and we are proving that it's empty. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I know that we always say, hey, don't go use reflection. There's better ways to go do it. And I agree that for a lot of the code that we're writing in C Sharp, you really don't need to be using reflection. I think it's an awesome, powerful tool that you can use in different situations. And I wanted to show you this particular case with a debug watch because we're not actually adding any code that's using it to our source. We're just using it to go debug. So if you find that you're in a bit of a pinch and maybe you're doing something like I was doing where you're trying to look at some internals for some of the .NET types just to see what the heck is going on, you might be able to leverage something like this. If you thought this was useful and you want to see some other debug techniques, when the video is ready, you can check that out here. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.